Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace one, Arsenal nil, Aston Villa two. It's advantage to Manchester City heading into the final six games of the Premier League for this season. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another video. Yes, today's video is going to center around yesterday's Super Sunday action and the Premier League title race as it was a perfect weekend for Manchester City. A lot has been said about City over the past few weeks and few months, but this weekend saw City absolutely perfect as they beat Luton Town by five goals to one. And then they sat back and watched a absolute implosion by both Liverpool and Arsenal as they both lost their respective games. Liverpool lost at home to Crystal Palace and Arsenal lost at home to Aston Villa and now City and Pep Guardiola are two points clear at the top of the table heading into the final six games of the season. We're going to obviously tie talking about the Premier League title race into my match reaction for Liverpool. Uh, but before we go any further and talking about all of that stuff, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always and forever greatly appreciated. Get involved in the comment section as well. Let me know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it in regards to anything that I will talk about in this video in regards to City, Liverpool, Arsenal, the title race, everything else in between. Uh, but for right now, without any further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's talk all of that stuff that I just mentioned. Yesterday was a disaster from Liverpool's point of view. Yesterday was atrocious. Yesterday was abysmal. Yesterday, it, it capped off what was a horrific week as far as what Liverpool are concerned. Starting the week with a draw against Manchester United, still baffled by how that actually resulted in a draw. Then we move on to the Atalanta game. I'm still trying to get my head around what the hell kind of performance was that. And then losing to Crystal Palace at home. The first home defeat in the Premier League for, what, the best part of a year and a half, I think. Something along them lines. It was absolutely atrocious what happened, what, what's happened this past week. And it really doesn't. Anything anything that's happened this past week really does not add up to Premier League champions. The first half display was abysmal. The second half display was better. It really couldn't have got any worse, admittedly. But we still looked blunt in attack. Our attack was still called into question. And I have to hold my hands up here and I have to say that I have judged Arsenal all season for their attack. And I've questioned whether their attack can be sharp enough can be prolific enough to go through the season and still challenge at the top end of the table. And now I'm looking at this Liverpool side and I'm thinking, defensively, we just switch off in key moments. Defensively, we are so casual in key moments that ultimately costs us. And we were doing that again and again and again. And this week has been a complete set of examples as to why... Uh, why that happens and how that happens but also our attack is just again called into question because it's not sharp enough it's not prolific enough and I again like I say I had to hold my hands up because I was I was saying at the beginning of the season our attack is probably our best our best best asset it's not anymore it's really not anymore when you consider that we are not putting away these chances we are so indecisive going forward we have got a striker in Darwin Nunes who I absolutely love and adore for everything he has in his locker. And there have been some maybe moments with him. There have been some is he getting there kind of moments with him. But then he goes and has these past few games where it's like maybe he's not again and maybe he will never get there. Maybe he should have got there by now but... There's something lacking in his composure and his consistency. Luis Diaz is the same. I love Luis Diaz and I've been so hit and miss with Luis Diaz over these past several months or so. But maybe there, you start, there starts to come a time where you think, maybe this guy, this is as good as this guy is going to get. 
I like the guy. I like what he brings to the table again. I like his passion. I like his work rate. I like his work ethic. I like his, you know, his skill, his flair, his dribbling, his pace. I like everything that he brings to the table, but he's not a clinical, ice-cold finisher that we sort of need. And maybe things will change with a new manager. Maybe things won't. Obviously, we're entering into the unknown come the end of the season. But I just feel like maybe these rumours of 75 million, if they are true, maybe it might be best to cash in on him. Maybe the same with Darwin Nunes. Uh, that, that's just where I'm at right now, where I'm at this current kind of crossroad of maybe these players won't get any better. And I look at Salah and I think, well, at least Salah's got some credit in the bank with several years of pure, phenomenal consistency. But even he yesterday deserves to take some criticism for what was a poor performance. Again, our attack was just blunt. Our attack should be called into question. And we left that game yesterday thinking the title was over. And it very well might be. The title very well might be over. I mean... You lose a home game to Crystal Palace at this stage of the season. You lost already to Atalanta earlier on in the season. Maybe we've overstretched our squad with all the injuries and everything. I know people will not want me to go over the injuries and people will say, you're just making excuses. But our squad has been overstretched for a while and I have been saying, you know, how far can this overstretched squad go? Well, it seems that plus our tired attack seems to have given us the answer. This is as far as maybe what we go. And like I say, we we ended that game yesterday and we were thinking, I, well, I was personally thinking the title was over. I was personally saying, I was going around telling people that the title's over. It's one of City and Arsenal. It's Arsenal's definitely to lose. Um... And then Arsenal actually did go on and lose in pretty surprising style and pretty surprising fashion. And then I was thinking, well, maybe it's not quite over as yet. City obviously hold the advantage. City hold two points. But City do have a couple of awkward games in there that I'm sure those kinds of teams will probably roll over for City now. Especially the Tottenham game for pretty much obvious reasons. They have a couple of awkward games in there, admittedly. But again, I don't really... It's, it, it's very hard to catch City when they are ahead. We know that as much as anyone. <laughs> you know, Liverpool fans know that as much as anyone. We, we've tried catching them for several years and haven't been able to. So we know how difficult it can be when City get that little bit of an advantage. When they get that foot in the door, we know how difficult it is to stop them. Um... And we've got some difficult games in our running as well. If we're struggling against Crystal Palace at home, how awkward is the Merseyside derby going to be against an Everton side that's going to be battling relegation? How awkward is Fulham going to be? And I know how inconsistent Fulham have been all season, but when they're at home, they can be very awkward at times. How difficult is Tottenham going to be? How difficult is Aston Villa themselves going to be when we have to face them at Villa Park. You know, our running, I've always said, has been difficult. Probably not the most difficult. Probably not as much difficult as uh, as Arsenal's running is. But definitely more difficult than City's. And now that City have the advantage. Now that City have maybe the, the run of games coming up that they do. Maybe this is City's for the taking. And maybe this is kind of game over. And maybe... I know I want to sound optimistic and I want to try and be as positive as possible. But maybe this is season over for both Arsenal and Liverpool. And it's a massive se it's a massive week coming up for Arsenal as well. With obviously um, the Champions League coming up. With obviously the 2-2 draw at Bayern Munich that they're taking to the Allianz. A Bayern Munich side that's going to be back in front of their home fans. A Bayern Munich side that have obviously lost the Bundesliga title officially now. Um, and uh, obviously uh, will be putting all their eggs in the Champions League basket. It's going to be no easy task, despite the fact that Bayern Munich may not be the same Bayern Munich of old, despite the fact that they may not be the same fearful Bayern Munich that they have been in recent years. 
that's still going to be a difficult task for Arsenal to go into a very hostile environment and come out with any sort of positive result to take through and to obviously guide through until the final uh, four stage of the semi-finals of this competition. So it's a huge week for Arsenal. It's not over by any stretch of the imagination, the Premier League, but like I say, it is looking like maybe the tide is slowly drifting um, in in favour of Manchester City. And I've always put them as favourites anyway due to recent history, mainly uh, of being on the agenda and being on the cards. But even so, it, you know, it, it's still so frustrating. And obviously Arsenal losing in the way that they did to Aston Villa was even more of a kick in the teeth for Liverpool. Despite the fact that we've caught a bit of a lifeline there, despite the fact that our title race isn't exactly over yet, it still is a bit of a kick in the teeth because we were waiting for them to drop points. And it's just so coincidental that they drop points in the same weekend that we do and they lose in the same fashion that we do. So it's even more frustrating and annoying. And on that, Liber uh, and on that Arsenal uh, Villa game, it seemed like it was just a matter of time. Despite the fact that there were a few warnings from Unai Emery's side that um, that you know they were still in the game, it did seem like a matter of time before Arsenal were going to win. They were playing some scintillating football at times, but Martin Odegaard in particular was just pulling the strings in the final third. But then just again lapses of concentration, moments to forget, kind of thing. It, it, it was just a real kick in the teeth for Arsenal just to have that kind of thing happen to them. I do have to question, though, whether or not... And I've said it I said it before, and I'll say it again. If Arsenal do not win anything, I think there are serious questions that need to be asked of Mikel Arteta and whether he is the guy to get them across that finish line. Is he just the guy to lay the foundations, or is he the guy to get them across the finish line? For me... I think he's the guy to get to lay the foundations. I don't think he is the guy, and I never have felt he is the guy, to get Arsenal across the finish line in terms of winning a major title, Champions League or Premier League. I just don't see him being that guy. And I think we've been proven here. Like, If this is to be the case, and if this is to be Arsenal's complete downfall now to the rest of the season, or even if Arsenal do go on and win all their games, but City also win their games, this has to be a question that needs to be looked at. If Arsenal do not win the title, should he be gotten rid of? In my opinion, I think you could probably look at maybe there's a better manager out there that can maybe get them across the finish line and maybe you should try and get them in. I don't necessarily know off the top of my head who that may be. So maybe there is a question of whether or not that better manager is actually out there and available. But for me, I don't think he'll ever be a guy to get you across the finish line in terms of winning a major title. I just don't. I've never have done. And I probably never will. If he wouldn't get you across the finish line last season when you were eight points clear, I doubt he's going to do it this season when, yes, you are only two points clear with six games to go. But... Like I say, it's going to be a massive week for Arsenal, not just in terms of the Premier League, but in terms of the Champions League as well. So there are huge, huge implications over the next coming weeks for Arsenal. For Liverpool, look, we've overachieved this season. No one was expecting us to be in a title race. No one was expecting us to be challenging City and Arsenal this season. We were expected to build it back up and obviously challenge for top four again following what was a complete car crash and a train wreck last season. We had overachieved. It still feels very disappointing the way that our season is sort of petering out a little bit because obviously... We we won the we won the Carabao Cup and we were anticipating and expecting a, a wild ride to the end of the season with you know still the FA Cup to go and the Europa League to go and the Premier League obviously, but obviously now we're out of the FA Cup, we've got a massive uphill battle to climb in the second leg of the Europa League quarter final 
which is extremely unlikely to fall in our favour. We don't really do well on Italian soil anyway, and yet we have to go to Atalanta this week and score at least four goals and concede none. So that's going to be a massive mountain to climb, which is probably not going to be achievable. And then you, of course, have the Premier League, which now is in Manchester City's favour and it's in Manchester City's hands. And although City haven't exactly put on the performances that they have in recent years, and although they do seem a bit more vulnerable, then, they ha they, then in my opinion, they have ever looked in recent years. They are still getting the results when they matter most. Um, so we can hope that another team does us a favour. And there are a couple of games, like I say, in which I would certainly look at maybe City potentially dropping points. But at the same time, I still would consider them favourites. But I still have my games in which City may drop points. Tottenham, for example, could be an interesting one. Um, I think they've still got to play Brighton as well. That could be interesting, although that, again, should be a win for City. There could be a couple of games in there in which you may look at and go, you know what? you may fancy City to maybe slip up there. There could be potential banana skins. But, given that they are City, given that Pep Guardiola's side are looking pretty strong in certain areas and with certain key players, you would probably suspect they will navigate through those games, unfortunately. So, I've always said City to win. I've always said that City were the favourites to go on and win the Premier League title. Um... But yeah, uh, it is a bit of a kick in the teeth for Liverpool, especially because Arsenal dropped points yesterday. And if we'd have won, the advantage would have been back with us, uh, assuming that obviously things would have stayed the same with that Arsenal result. Poor performance from Liverpool yesterday. Another, uh, dr another one just to add to it. What has been a dreadful week for Reds. Hopefully this week is much better. Hopefully this week we can start taking our chances again. Hopefully this week our defence actually defends again. And hopefully our midfield isn't or, or hasn't completely, the engine room, should we say, exploded uh, or imploded um, with just playing so many games and obviously being completely overstretched with all the injuries that we've had this season. So... A lot to work on for Liverpool, a lot to refocus on for Arsenal. I, I've got no reason to doubt that that Arsenal result was just a one-off. Unai Emery can produce them kind of masterclasses against certain opponents and maybe Arsenal just were the wrong, were, were just the, the wrong team at the wrong place at the wrong time kind of thing. Um, I've got no reason to doubt that they'll go on a bad run of form. But like I say, it's going to be a massive week considering that they've got Champions League football this week. And obviously it's a massive game against Bayern Munich in the second leg. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with, with Liverpool and Arsenal going forward. Um, obviously more so with Liverpool in my personal opinion because they are my team. Um, but for Arsenal, I've got no reason to doubt it'll be a one-off. I've got no reason to doubt that they'll push City right to the limit. But this should now theoretically be cities for the taking cities for the losing um yeah realistically this is all cities now this is all cities now you would imagine um but we'll obviously have to wait and see there could be a few t more twists and turns because let's face it past f three weeks have seen it be in liverpool's hands the first week the second week is in Arsenal's, and then this week, it's in City's. So there have so there have been twists and turns already, and you'd be you'd be lying to yourself if you didn't think that maybe that could happen later on down the line as well. So we'll just have to wait and see. Obviously, the FA Cup's coming up for City as well, so that could be a factor to throw into the works as well. Um, but no, for me, it's City's all the way. Um, unfortunately. But that's just the way it is. Normality has seemingly resumed. City are back top of the table and have the Premier League title race in their hands. These are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of everything that I talked about in this video? Whether it's Liverpool, City, 
Arsenal, the games yesterday, the game at the weekend uh, for the City against Luton, and the title race as a whole. I'd love to know what you guys think and feel. Your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it, will make for great interest in reading, I'm sure, down below in that comment section. So please do get involved down there. Uh, otherwise, hit the like button on the way out if you enjoy the video. Subscribe if you're new or listen to more content like this. Both things are always improved. Greatly appreciate And, of course, get involved. Uh, and of course, thank you, everyone, for so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I'll see you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it may be. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Speak to you all again very, very soon.